Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to the Vortex. This is our 100 subscriber special. That's right, we have been here for almost a year, and in that year, we've gotten 100 subscribers. This is an exciting time. And in celebration of this special moment, I've decided to go back and redo the very first video we did on this channel when we talked about the three methods of faster than light travel. And now with all the things about acting and talking in front of a camera and editing and stuff that I've learned since then, we're gonna redo it with the six, yes, six methods of faster than light travel. Since then, I've learned of three more that deserve their own category. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The six methods are space warping, wormholes, hyperspace, instant transportation, tachyon transformation, and changing the speed of light. So before we get into the list, there's a few things I want to talk about. First is going faster than the light using any of these methods is very most likely impossible. According to our best science, special relativity, and general relativity, and, and we have multiple good reasons to believe converging lines of evidence that faster than light travel of any kind is impossible. But that doesn't mean we couldn't be wrong sometime. And also, it's really cool to talk about. Not the least of those reasons being that according to known science, any method of faster than light travel allows for time travel. And I've talked about why this is true on several videos on the channel already. You can go check some of those out. But the very short, the basic short version is that this moment that we call right now, this slice of time, the present throughout all the universe, is not objective, it's relative. So the boundary between future and past is not right now, the boundary is the speed of light. And any technology that allows us to go faster than the speed of light is going to be able to go future FTL or past FTL. There's no physical boundary between future FTL and past FTL. The physical boundary is the speed of light. So any technology that allows us to go faster than light will allow us to go backward in time, even if it takes a round trip to do so. So there's a couple rules for this list. The one major rule is I have to understand it. <laughs> I have to understand it and be able to explain it. And all other rules fall from there. So no word salad. If, if it's just techno babble that doesn't mean anything, it doesn't get on this list. If there's multiple ideas that are the same thing, but use different words like slip space and subspace, those are both hyperspace. So they're gonna be categorized in hyperspace. They're not gonna get their own categorization. So with that in mind, let's get to the list of the six possible methods of faster than light travel that you can look into if you're a scientist or you can write if you are a writer. The first method is space warping. This is the Alcubierre warp drive, which we've done a special video on, so you can check that one out. In short, the warp drive is you have what's called a soliton, which is a region of space that is a, is a wave that moves by itself but doesn't dissipate. So you have this bubble that's around the ship, and the ship is not moving through space, it is carried through space by a bubble of space. So the ship is actually staying still in this bubble of space that is moving through space. So it's kind of a difficult idea to wrap your head around at first, but if you think about it a lot and just expose yourself to a lot of the ideas, like a bunch of my videos, then it starts to make sense and you can understand it. Also in the space warping category are things like Kroshnikov tubes, which are called a warp corridor sometimes. It's just a region of space where the distance through it is much shorter than the distance around it. It's different from a wormhole because a Kroshnikov tube has sides and a wormhole does not. We'll get to wormholes in a moment. Also in the space warping category can be just regular warping of space. Like, you know, uh, if you walk around a pole, you have to walk around it twice to get back to where you started. Or like going around a black hole has less than 180 degrees and things like that. Like maybe going through this tunnel gets you to your destination faster than going around it, like the Krasnikov tube, or maybe it's just like space is weird and bent and 
folded and weird stuff like that. It all counts as space warping. Second, we have wormholes! A wormhole is a shortcut between moments of space and also time because there's not really any objective rate of time, no objective moment in time. So wormholes can be both doorways between space and doorways between time. You know, one end of the wormhole is here, one end of the wormhole is here. These two places do not need to be synchronized in time. So of all the methods of faster than light that lead to time travel, wormholes are easiest to conceptualize how they can lead to time travel. A couple of things a wormhole is not. A wormhole is not a teleport. It is not something that takes you from one place and immediately puts you at another. Like in the video game Portal, you might think of going into one portal and coming out the other side as if you're being teleported. That's not really true. What the case is, is that on the path through the portal, the room is literally on the other side. Like if there's a portal over there to the other side of my room, then the other side of my room is literally five feet that way. A wormhole is not a tunnel through space like a Krasnikov tube. A wormhole is literally another path that goes through its own space. It doesn't require higher dimensions because there's nothing wrong with only three dimensions existing but also being curved and having weird topologies like this. A wormhole could be like a doorway that you can walk through to just end up on another planet or somewhere on the other side of the world or next door wherever. Wormholes can also be spherical where you go into the side of the sphere and you come out the opposite side of the sphere on the other end. Now this may be confusing because on this side the sphere is curved this way and on the other side the sphere is curved this way, but that just comes down to tidal forces and if your wormhole bubble is big enough then you won't notice the difference. Just don't try to fly a ship that is too big into a wormhole or it will get crunched and weird stuff will happen. Number three, hyperspace. Hyperspace just means more than three dimensions of space. So you could have a four-dimensional space, there's four-dimensional objects like a tesseract or a hypersphere, and the way to use hyperspace for faster than light travel is if our 3D universe is embedded in a higher dimensional space and we could somehow get out of these 3D into the four or five, however many D the actual big universe is, and then take a shortcut through there. Kind of like on the surface of the Earth, if you want to go to the other side of the world, you have to fly around the curvature of the Earth. But hyperspace would be kind of like tunneling through the Earth and taking a shortcut through the third dimension. The surface of the Earth is two dimensions, cutting through the center of the Earth is three dimensions. So that would be like adding an extra dimension and taking a shortcut, which is exactly what hyperspace aims to do. Incidentally, hyperspace only works if the path through the higher dimensions is actually a shortcut, or our three-dimensional universe is folded up in those higher dimensions. Like a two-dimensional piece of paper uh, is flat, but you can bend it, and then the, the distance between the edges here is shorter because the two-dimensional flat paper has been bent through the third dimension. In order for hyperspace to be a shortcut in our universe, our 3D universe has to be folded up in the fourth and higher dimensions. There are many, many instances of hyperspace in science fiction. And I want to give an honorable mention to Anchor Space from Ring Runner, which is the idea that the universe as we know it is revolving around an axis that goes from infinity to minus infinity or whatever. You know, the universe is revolving around a central axis and by dropping anchor into the fourth dimension, the higher dimension called anchor space, you can stop moving with the universe and then the rest of the universe will move around you as you are in anchor space and you can drop back into regular space to have effectively moved faster than light at an angle around this central axis. Number four, instant transportation. This one requires more laws of physics to be broken than any other method. Not only does special relativity have to be wrong and there has to be an objective reference frame and an objective plane through the universe that is right now, but there also have to be objective space coordinates. And the idea behind instant transportation 
is you stop existing at one point and then exactly the same moment you start existing somewhere else. And the idea would be you type in coordinates or something and the coordinates determine where you're gonna end up. And that is neither how space works nor time. There aren't objective coordinates. That's the idea behind a wormhole is that around the wormhole through regular space, the distance is very long, but through the wormhole, the distance is very short. And neither of them is the objective correct distance. They're both valid distances. So not only does there have to be an objective now for instant transportation, but there also has to be objective distance and direction. And there is just none of that in known science. And so you have to break a lot of known science to do instant transportation. Nevertheless, it's still on the table for sci-fi writers and for people who like to think about this stuff like I do. And so it gets a mention. Number five, tachyon transformation. No regular matter can accelerate to light speed or faster than light. We can have particles that are always slower than light and we can have particles that are always traveling at light speed, but no particle can accelerate up to light speed. So this leads us to ask the question, what if there are particles that can only travel faster than light and can never decelerate to light speed? And we call these tachyons, and you can plug in the numbers into the equations of special relativity and figure out what they would be like. This is another method we could theoretically use, perhaps in future theories or perhaps in sci-fi, for faster than light travel and communication. The idea being, if you could take your spaceship and transform all of its matter into tachyon versions of that matter, then you'd have a spaceship that is traveling faster than light and could not decelerate slower than light. And you have to transform that matter back into regular matter when you reach your destination. We talked about this a little bit when we did our themed video on Christopher Paolini's book, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, but that was focused more on how to write a faster than light method into your sci-fi book without allowing time travel. And so there's still enough material left that we could do another video on tachyons. And finally, changing the speed of light. I actually learned about this only a couple of weeks ago by somebody commenting on my previous video. And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> if we could change the speed of light, and now I'm thinking of all the ways this could be extremely dangerous, like universe destroying dangerous, but if we could change the speed of light, that would be a way to get around the speed limit. Particularly if we could increase the speed of light. Then we could fly slower than light technically, but it's faster than light in the external universe. So those are the six methods of faster than light travel. Who knows, maybe there are more that I haven't thought of, which is totally plausible because I just added the sixth one a couple of weeks ago. So maybe we'll revisit this topic sometime in the future for the thousand subscriber special or something, I don't know. What I do know is that I plan to do videos on each of these topics specifically. We already did our warp drives video, next up comes the wormholes video. So if you want to be notified when that one comes out and when the hyperspace video comes out and when the rest of these videos come out, you can subscribe. And if you think of any methods that I missed, let me know in the comments so we can talk about them in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.